So this just go to the array or the array list and say, hey, I want the first element. Hey, I want the second element. And then array list will give the values. What if instead of using a external loop, can a array list have a power where it will have a method which will throw the elements out? I mean, that will be faster, right? Ready? Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about for each method for collection. Now basically we are trying to focus more on stream API, that's what we are going to do in upcoming videos. And in the previous video we have talked about lambda expression. So before starting with stream API and after talking about lambda expression, we have to first start with for each method. Now see, first of all, why do we need something new now? See, as I mentioned before in the previous video that in Java 8, we got some amazing feature. One of them is Lambda expression and second one is Stream API. Now see, when we talk about the world now, it's all about data, right? We have huge amount of data to work with. And we have to make sure that when you work with this data, you have to make it fast, you have to make it efficient. And as a programmer, you should not make a lot of mistakes. We have this tendency of doing everything by ourselves, but what if you can just give that responsibility to the programming language itself. And that's where Stream API says, hey, if you want to work with data, we will give you some awesome techniques which you can use and you can uh, process your data. It can be, okay, what exactly it does, we can talk about that later. But here, I just want to use a method using which I can get data from the collection. See, collection is very important in terms of storing data, right? Example, if I talk about collection here, so let's say I have a list of values here. And I, I want to say this list of values are, let's say, integers. So I would say integers here. And of course, we have to import the package for list, done that. And now I want to say this is nums is equal to. So basically, I want to create a add a list which will have some values or list which, have, which will have some values. We have a choice. You can say new add a list and you can add one by one values or you can use arrays dot as list and you can put up some data here. Okay, so basically we got these values here and then I want to work with these values. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something with this data, with these values here. Let's, let's try to print this data. Now, how do you think? Of course, I can do a lot of different things with this data here, but let's say I just want to print it. So one of the way you can fetch data from an array or from collection is using loops. Example, list supports index values. So you can use a normal loop and you can fetch the value. So basically in normal loop as well, in Java, we have two options. You can use normal loop, which uses a index value, or you can use a enhanced for loop using which you can directly get the element from the array. In this video, we are going to focus on the third part. Okay. So the first two part actually comes under external loops and we want to focus on the internal loop. Okay. So once we see the syntax, then you will understand what I was talking about. So what I will do is I will first use a normal loop here. So what I will say is I will say int i is equal to zero because that's why that's where the index number starts. And then I will end at five and i plus plus. That's our loop. And using this loop, I can simply fetch the value. So I can say it's out nums dot and you can fetch the value. So from this nums, you can get the value by passing the index number, which is i in this case. And that's it. This is what you want to do. Let's run this code. And you can see in the console here, so you can see my console is on the right hand side here, which is floating as of now. But we got these values, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. That's right. Now, this is one way. But the only thing is you are managing the index here. So we know we have another way. Instead of using a normal loop, let me just come in this section. We can use our enhanced loop. So example, I can say int n inside num. So basically it will not use a index value. It will simply fetch a values from this nums and take one value at a time and put that in n. So every time you run this loop, every time it, it reads, it basically jumps from value to value. And once you get that value, you can simply print the value itself. So you can say you can print n and of course it will give you the same output. So you can see both are doing the same thing. In the first case, you are using a normal for loop where we are using a index value. In the second one, we are basically, this is basically called enhanced for loop, which will jump 
between the elements and fetch the element which you want. And of course, you can perform any operation. We are just printing it here. Now, I want to highlight one introduction to Java 8, which is the for each method. And of course, it will make much more sense once we start with uh, the stream API. So what I will do is, I will not be using any of this loop here. Of course, you can comment this part. I will just do it here itself. Now, both this loop are actually an external for loop, which means they externally act on the elements. So they just go to the array or the array list and say, hey, I want the first element. Hey, I want the second element. And then array list will give the values. What if, instead of using an external loop, can a array list have a power where it will have a method which will throw the elements out? I mean, that will be faster, right? So what we can do here is, we can use nums dot. The moment I say nums dot, you can see there is another method here which is called for each. Now, if you are coming from Java 7, it was not there, it was introduced in Java 8. So we can simply use num, uh, nums dot for each and you can print the values. Now, if you have seen my earlier video of Lambda expression or if you have any experience of Lambda expression, you, are, you will understand next 20 seconds. People who are new to Lambda expression or never seen this, just go with the flow. I will explain each, the, each and everything with the steps. So what I will do is I want to print the values, right? So I can use nums dot for each and I can say n add o and I can simply say s out n. That's it. So whatever we have done in these three lines or these three lines, you can do that in one line here. You don't trust me? Let me just run this code. And you can see we got the same output. Okay, so even this works. But I know, I know, a few people here are like, hey, you know, what is this? We have never seen this concept and how it is happening. For you, let me explain. So what was happening is for people who, were, who, are, who knew uh, Lambda Expression, who were familiar with this, uh, basically for each will throw the value, right? It will accept the value in N and the same value will be printed here, okay? But now let me explain this step by step. Remove this. See, one thing is for sure, when we use for each, it basically fetch the value from the array list and it will give the value. It is your job now to accept the value and perform the operation. Now, how it exactly does? So to, we do that, example, if I, if I click on for each here, you can see for each is a method which came inside a interface called iterable, okay? And this, this looks weird, right? In the interface we are creating, we are defining a method. So in Java 8, it is allowed to create a default methods and you can provide definition as well. Again, we'll discuss that in some other day, why they have allowed uh, this concept. But important is, when you talk about for each, for each actually accepts a object of consumer. Let me repeat, for each method takes consumer object. So that means if I want to use for each, basically I have to pass an object of a consumer. Now what is a consumer? So if I jump to the consumer interface, now consumer is a functional interface. Remember functional interface, it will have only one method. And if you can see, it only has one abstract method, which is accept. Yes, we do have other method, but that's a defined method. So we don't have to worry about it. We are concerned about accept. So it has only one method. So basically, if you want to use for each here, we need to create object of a consumer. So I can say consumer, uh, we have to import the package for this. And this consumer, we have to also mention, it will work with what type of elements. We are working with integers. And I can say consumer object, I can say cons equal to new consumer. Now, how do we create an object of an interface? Of course, we have multiple ways. Uh, we can create a class and that class will be implementing the interface and then you can do it. Or we can use something called anonymous in a class, which we have seen in the earlier videos. If you have not seen my previous videos, I would recommend you to watch that first and then jump around this video. You will find the link in description for the previous video. So what I want to do is I want to create the object of a consumer. And uh, this is how you can define the inner class. And once you get the object of cons here, you can simply pass it. Okay. But don't you think we are doing nothing in the accept? So basically what we want to do is every time you run this for each, I mean, when you call this for each, it will go to the array list and it will say, hey, give me the first value. 
when analyst will give you the value let's say it will give you four here with that four basically it will try to call the accept method and in the accept method it will pass the value four that means this accept method will be called five times let me repeat when you say for each and when you pass the object of consumer here it will simply call the method accept how many times it depends upon the number of values you have since we have five values it will call the accept five times and then in that accept five times every time this integer will have a different value this is just a variable it will have a different value it will have four five seven eight nine and here basically i just have to print that value right that's what we are doing from long time i can just print the value let's run this code and you can see we got the output but don't you think we were doing with three lines and now we are doing it with so many lines it's just that we are trying to optimize this code i'm just showing you step by step so basically for to use for each we need to create object of a consumer and that's how we do it but don't you think we can simplify this more cons is basically getting used only once and we have seen the earlier video if there's something a class or the definition or a method is using or, or uh, a variable is getting used only once let's forget about the variables let's talk about classes just to keep it simple if you know there's a class which will be used only once you can use anonymous in a class so what i'm saying is instead of using cons here can i simply cut this part cut uh, can i replace this with cons we can right see ultimately what we are saying is we want the object of consumer in for each so inside this for each parameter we have to pass the object of consumer and we are doing that with anonymous in a class simple step right that's one way or what i can do is here itself let's make some changes remember on that day or in the earlier video basically not that day uh, we were able to replace the entire syntax this is an interface which is a functional interface so we can actually use a lambda expression so basically i can remove this entire section you know why it's because we have seen consumer cons is equal to of course anyone can complete this sentence anyone can say public void accept because in the consumer interface we only have one method called accept which is abstract method so we can remove the entire part and we can also remove this curly brackets here because we have removed the curly brackets from the earlier part you can go back 10 seconds and you can watch it and then the only thing is just before this curly brackets you have to put an arrow for defining that this is a lambda expression and now we can just take this up and done you can see we have reduced so many lines of code there's one more beauty you don't even have to mention the type of a variable that is optional also if you have only one variable you don't even need to put the round brackets yes if you have different variables let's say five or i mean two three variables then you have to put the round brackets for one variable is it is optional next when you have only one statement you don't need the curly brackets we can remove that and we can write everything in one line just to keep it more simple instead of using the variable integer let me use a variable n simple stuff now don't you think we can replace cons with this exact statement we can cut and paste done we don't even need this this is what i've shown you before right so basically this is a very important method now once we continue with stream api this becomes a termination uh, stream again we'll discuss that later but this will be very important when you when you want to do something with the variables print it save that in a database or send it on the network your choice but if you have a list of values and if you want to do something with it you can use something called for each to get the value and perform the operation just to keep it simple we have just printed it and let's run this code one last time and it works so this is for each method in your collections so i hope you enjoyed this session let me in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos bye, -bye.